Hello and welcome to evening prayer on this Wednesday of the 12th week of Ordinary Time. And today also uh, we celebrate the feast days of uh, a couple of saints from the 1500s from England. Uh, one was a, uh, a bishop and he was actually posthumously, uh, or actually when he was in prison in England, uh, elevated to cardinal. And then the uh, layman, who was the chancellor of Great Britain and uh, a friend and confidant of King Henry VIII, uh, Thomas More. And the, the priest's name, the bishop's name was um, Fisher. Uh, was it Anthony Fisher? Let me, let me look back up here. John Fisher. John Fisher and Thomas More. John Fisher, the bishop, Thomas More, uh, the layman both martyred by Henry VIII for refusing to acquiesce to his demands that uh, they revere him as the head of the Anglican Church that he just created, grant him a divorce from his wife so he could marry someone else, and uh, so for their allegiance to their faith instead of to their king, uh, they both uh, lost their lives standing up for what was right uh, in the eyes of God. So we have those two beautiful saints and martyrs uh, to uh, pray to today for their intercessions. In 1975, St. Thomas More, who was a lawyer, and of course, he was, since he was the Chancellor of Great Britain, somewhat of a politician as well, uh, Pope John Paul II, St. Pope John Paul II now uh, made Thomas More the patron saint of politicians. So my prayer today is that uh, through the intercession of St. Thomas More, may all of our politicians decide to place God and their reverence and allegiance to him and their faith above the whims of government officials. Now in Thomas More's day, the king, but you know now we have policies in our democracy that are very uh, against the laws of God, the statutes of our faith. So I pray today that the influence in intercession of Thomas More uh, rubs off on the politicians of today so that we can be a more godly people, a God led by godly leaders in our nation. So let us pray our evening prayer together. And well, after we talk about our gospel for a minute, I got their gospel story today. Jesus says, beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Beware of false prophets. Beware of uh, um, people who say one thing and really mean something else. Trickery. He says, uh, a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And you will know them by the fruit that they bear. So if they're rotten to the core inside, uh, even though they might be trying to trick you, you'll see by their fruits that they are evil and you, will not rec you won't be tempted to follow them. And, uh, you know, he, this idea of living, you know, true to who we are is so important. Uh, Father uh, Praveen this morning, again, his wonderful homily on this gospel, is talking about how we need to be genuine if, we're, if we are truly followers of Christ. You know, we have to say what we mean, mean what we say. We can't uh, say and do things that are contrary to God's will and then expect people to fall for what we say. You know, he was saying that a lot of times as parents, you know, of children, they'll look at their children and wonder, where did they learn how to say those things? Where, when did they learn how to do what they're doing? It's so terrible. Well, I think the first place we need to look is in the mirror, see if we are setting an example for the people that are in our lives uh, and 
not being a, a wolf in sheep's clothing to them where we were, we're, we're sending a different message, you know, than, than we should be sending. Trickery and falsehoods are never the way to, to be a good person in the eyes of God. So we pray our evening prayer together today on this Feast of St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher, asking for them to be inspirations to the people in our lives and to ourselves today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I have come. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, gave birth to a great man. John the Baptist. Ah, okay. Tomorrow, big feast day in the church. Tomorrow is the feast of the nativity, the birth of John the Baptist. So as we go into our evening prayer tonight, it's the vigil. So our evening prayer will kind of be focused on tomorrow's feast as we go into the vigil of tomorrow's feast, the, uh, uh, the birth of John the Baptist. So again, our psalmody begins, Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, gave birth to a great man, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praise be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from his misery he raises the poor. To set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. To the childless wife, he gives a home and gladdens her heart with children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, word of God, surrendering the brightness of your glory, you became man so that we may be raised, raised from the dust to share your very being. May there be innumerable children of the church to offer homage to your name from the rising of the sun to its setting. Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, gave birth to a great man, John the Baptist, <coughs> who prepared the way for the Lord. John, the forerunner of the Lord, was born of an old and childless couple. My soul gives pray, give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God while I live. Put no trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. It is he who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. The Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. It is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God of glory and power, those who have put all their trust in you are happy indeed. Shine the brightness of your light on us, that we may love you always with a pure heart. 
John, the forerunner of the Lord, was born of an old and childless couple. There is no man born of women greater than John the Baptist. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure, that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him, in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. There is no man born of women greater than John the Baptist. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. According to his promise, God has brought forth from David's descendants, Jesus, a Savior for Israel. John heralded the coming of Jesus by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John's career was coming to an end, he would say, What you suppose me to be, I am not. Rather, Look for one who comes after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. He who is to come after me existed before me. Make straight his paths. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. Zechariah entered the temple of the Lord, and the angel Gabriel appeared to him, standing on the right of the altar of incense. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Zechariah entered the temple of the Lord, and the angel Gabriel appeared to him, standing on the right of the altar of incense. Let us pray joyfully to God our Father, who called John the Baptist to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of Christ. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. You called John the Baptist from his mother's womb to prepare the way of your son. Help us to follow in that path which the Baptist opened before the Lord Jesus. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. May your church, in imitation of the Baptist, fearlessly point out the Lamb of God, so that people in every age may acknowledge that the Lord comes to them. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. John the Baptist did not exalt himself, but acknowledged his role as forerunner of the Christ. Teach us to acknowledge that you are the giver of all our good gifts, and that we must use them in your service. 
O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. You called John the Baptist to give testimony to you by his life and even by his death. Help us to imitate his unceasing witness to your truth. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. Remember those who have died. Give them a place of light, happiness, and peace. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. Now let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God our Father, you raised up the John the Baptist to prepare a perfect people for Christ the Lord. Give your church joy in spirit and guide those who believe in you into the way of salvation and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.